like to thank Jesse and Thomas for adding to this video with some of their own personal video and today I'm going to do a video on how to maintain your machines specifically how to lubricate your machines and I'm going to show you what lubrication you should be using and what lubrication you should not your machines some of them might mostly be made out of metal and some of them might mostly be made out of plastics so we have to find a way to lubricate them so that they continue working properly without rusting and without seizing up but we have to find a lubrication that is not only good for metals but also won't erode plastic and that will be good for plastics as well so you have to maintain and clean your machines if you don't do that you will get contaminated materials all over your machines so some of the things people try to use on their machines that is bad for the machines is bleach and rubbing alcohol and what those do is those actually speed up the process that causes your machine to rust and the machines that are metal that have metal frames will rust a lot quicker if they're not treated if it's just plain steel so you don't want to use those things when you're trying to clean your machine so rust is caused by oxidation of the metals and that's a chemical effect that the air actually has on the metal and things like bleach and rubbing alcohol speed that up so one of the ways to protect it is to coat your metal with paint or grease or something that's going to protect that metal from the surrounding atmosphere metal will rust on you metal frames and metal parts but if you get an aluminum machine the bonus to using aluminum is that you don't have to worry about your machine rusting and it is coated with a material that will prevent it from rusting so certain machine frames you don't have to worry about rust but you still have to worry about your cores and your armature bar and your springs rusting so some of the things that people use from around their house to lubricate their machines are things like baby oil and the little bottle of lubrication that you get with hair clippers so I've heard of those being used to lubricate your tattoo machines I also grabbed some gun oil some WD-40 some garage door lube 3-in-1 lithium grease liquid wrench and some silicone spray so those are lubrications that you have around mostly for using on your car or using on things around your house and those are good for certain things but those 
are not all good for your tattoo machines. Petroleum jelly is made out of petroleum product. You can see it, it's in the name. Petroleum. If you look at the ingredient, you have white petroleum, petroleum product. And if you look at baby oil, you see it is made from mineral oil. This hair clipper oil, it doesn't even tell me what it is made out of. So I'm not going to trust this because I don't know exactly what it is. Right here on the gun oil, we also have petroleum. So everything up to here the WD-40, the liquid wrench, the gun oil, all of that stuff is bad for your tattoo machines. But the problem is for a rotary machine, you can't use it on the plastics. Even on a coil machine, you have plastic. You have your O-ring, you have the washers, your shoulder washers on your frame, you have the cover to your coils, the shrink wrap, you have the coating on your wire. All of that stuff is plastic. So if you just spray this with WD-40 and wipe it off, what's going to happen is that's going to eat away at all these little plastic parts that you have and you don't want that. So you want to use a lubricant that is made from silicone, silicone lubricant like this that will not affect the plastic. You can see right here for rubber, wood, plastic, and vinyl. You don't see plastic on these ones. You want to find something that specifically says it will not affect the rubber, like this. So certain companies actually sell lubricant that is meant to use on their machines. If you want to go to Walmart or your automotive store and pick up a whole can of lubricant that you can use on your tattoo machines, then this is what you're looking for right here or something that has silicone in it and says that it is good for rubber. And just so you'll show you the other lubricant you can get that actually comes in a little container which is good because you can put it into specific spots unlike this which you have to spray and it might go everywhere and then you have to clean up your machine. So instead of spraying your machine with this and covering the whole thing with spray, what you actually want to do is get a Q-tip and spray it on the Q-tip. That way you can apply it directly to where you need it. But he was running how you take care of rotaries. So I'm going to show you guys, but I'm going to try to demonstrate as best I can how I keep them properly lubed and all that good stuff. You'll want to put the lubricant on it about, I do it about every 20 hours of tattooing. And I use this little thing right here. You can buy it uh, from somewhere, I'm sure. Maybe even eBay has them. But it's basically, you just squeeze it and it puts little drops of oil out into it there. But anyway, I'm going to use my Bishop first. I have a ton of, these are all knockoffs here. This right here is a knockoff bishop that I have. You can actually see, compared to the real thing there, that's the big difference there. This one's got a plastic body, RCA. These are just for the regular clip cords. This is a metal body, 
It's got all the numbers and stuff in there. Anyway, when you oil these, you definitely want oil in them. The knockoffs are really loud. They're not near the quality of these others here. When the real bishop is running, it's, you can tell it's just next to silent. I mean, it's super, super quiet. That's the good stuff. That was running about 7.5. Anyway, when I oil them, I'll show you on the knockoff here since that's what most everybody else has, including me. I'm going to try to, it's really hard to hold it. All right. Get my camera to focus. All right, when you oil it up, you want to put a drop right in here on the spring, right in the middle there. You want to do all this with it running, by the way. You want to run it about nine volts, make it run really high when you're greasing it. Also, while it's running, you're going to put a few drops right here and right here on both sides, and then one in there. And on the bishop, you're going to put one in each little corner of this little square here. And you basically, like I said, want to do that every 15 or 20 hours, maybe. It depends on how it sounds. If you have one of these, a swash drive, this is my Dragonfly X2 here in the ink machine. I just oiled it up earlier, or I would actually turn it on and show you guys. But on these, you're gonna put one right down here in the main piston, one right above it. Anywhere it spins, basically, you wanna put some. This is also while it's running. You put one, two, on both sides of the spring here, and then on each side of the, uh, the bar there. And that's basically how I keep mine old. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any more questions on what to do with them or anything like that, they pretty much run their sales. You take it out of the box, and lube it up, turn it on. And that's what I like about rotaries. So anywhere where you have moving parts or a part that can seize up is where you want to lubricate your machine. And Rotaries come in all different shapes and sizes, so you have different areas where you need to lubricate them. But for the most part, if it moves, then you want to lubricate it. And on your coil machines, you want to lubricate anywhere where you have bare metal that is going to rust. Like your springs and your armature bar. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can like it. You can also visit me and other tattoo artists on Facebook at the Jaunty Artist Tattoo Club. And you can also visit the website www.jauntyartist.webnode.com I have a ton of, these are all knockoffs here. This right here is a knockoff bishop that I have. You can actually see, compared to the real thing there, that's the big difference there. This one's got a plastic body, RCA. These are just for the regular clip cords. This is a metal body. It's got all the numbers and stuff in there. Anyway, when you oil these, you definitely want oil in them. The knockoffs are really loud. They're not near the quality of these others here. And I'll actually show you what I'm talking about. is running it's you can tell it's just next to silent I mean it's super super quiet that's the good stuff that was running about 7.5 that's pretty much it there's a few things when it comes to these knockoffs like these ones right here the way they run it goes around in a small circle so the needles actually doing this kind of motion and that's why they pop rubber bands so much it's because of the awkward motion of it it's trying to break it but that's pretty much it I just wanted to show Rick and anybody else who's interested uh, how to keep your machines old um, also see how it's got a lot of those screws and stuff in there you want to make sure when you first get these things that all of that's tightened this one 
I think the bottom comes off right here or something. It was actually a huge piece of shit. I don't even know if it still works. Uh, it was super loud. Something seems like something broke in the middle, then it wouldn't get powered. This was like not even a week after I got the damn thing. The ones with the metal body are a lot better. This one was some kind of knockoff. Uh, I can't even remember what it was a copy now, no, but it was super loud. It actually runs okay. This right here is not functional on this one. It don't even turn. On the Dragonfly, on the Dragonfly, this right here, you can set the soft hit. I keep mine one spin, I think, to the right, and I keep the notch lined up straight, and that's about how I like to run mine. And if you have one like this, they're pretty decent machines. You just want to run these softer. They don't back off at all. None of them that I have back off except for the Dragonfly. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any more questions on what to do with them or anything like that, they pretty much run themselves. You take it out of the box and lube it up, turn it on. That's what I like about rotaries. Uh, they all run differently, so it's hard to say what you might want to run your speeds for certain things. The bishops are made to run a little higher. They run, I think, between seven and nine for shading, and then up to like nine to 11 or 12 or something like that for lining. I don't run them quite that high, but I like to run my lines really slow. I use round shaders a lot. But uh, the Dragonfly, I usually keep it around 5.56 to do soft shades. That's really all I use it for. I don't do much lining with it. I like the Bishop because it runs a little higher. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to comment. I'll answer best I can. Later. Okay, guys. I hear a lot of you getting these uh, knockoff bishops, and they got plastic bodies on them. I paid $19.99 for this. It's all aluminum. It's got a brushless motor in it. It's super quiet. That's at 7 volts. Go to lightinthebox.com and do a search on them. All they have are the purple ones. I got four of them. I've been satisfied with them for over a year now. Get you some.